National security is the real difference here because at uh, U.S. Steel, we know that we're foundational to the United States of America. Steel manufacturers are foundational. And you have to be able to make things in the United States. If you outsource fundamental foundational things to your country, then you're at the whim of bad actors and others who can shut you down. So it's, it's not just military that's affected. It's the roads. It's the bridges. It's the infrastructure. And of course, as you mentioned, it's the jobs. And it, we're just delighted to be able to open things up and to get things going again. Now, there are going to be those who say that protectionist policies actually will end up hurting the industries that they've been designed to protect. What do you say to that? Well, I say we've been in a trade war now in steel for some 30 years. 30 years, that's a really long time. And finally, we have a president in place that's actually taking action so we can get everybody to the table and putting in place these tariffs are a great first start. And you can see what it's doing to this facility. And as you said before, it's not just the 800 jobs that are coming here. It's the other jobs that get created from this. All right, Mr. Tyler Matheson Tyler? Uh, back in, in the headquarters here. When did you decide to uh, reopen these uh, facilities? In other words, was it before or after the president announced his steel tariffs? And second, what is it that caused you to reopen these facilities? Was it the tariffs? Was it uh, rising just sort of internal demand for your product? What changed? Well, for us, we look to the customer first, and for us, the customers are asking for more demand, but we can't be unclear about this. The 232 and the actions that the president has taken have been incredibly helpful to us, but we don't open our facilities based upon some, some action. We have to see the volumes coming in, and that's what we play to. We play to our customers, and, and that's why we open the facility. So, so just to be clear, did you, did you make the decision to reopen the facility before the 232 tariff uh, action or after? We made the decision concurrently with the 232 decision because we knew this was the issue that was helping to bring customer demand back. So it's hard to say which one played more of an impact, but again, we have to make sure that we're meeting our customer needs and, and the president has done a fantastic job with this with the, the help from uh, uh, Secretary Ross and of course Peter Navarro as well. This is making yeah. a very big difference for the communities here and also for our business. David, it's Sarah Eisen in the studio. What about the retaliatory tariffs that everyone else is now imposing on our and your or steel exports. Does that negate the positive impact you're seeing? Well, it's not negating the positive impact we're seeing. We'll have to see how all that plays out. But uh, again, you know, we've been in a trade war for 30 years, and I, I'd put it a little differently. We're actually now seeing our, our government stand up for the steel workers, and this is a really good thing for us. We'll have to see how this all plays out, but uh, we're, we think this is a, a good first step and maybe Canada and Mexico and others will come to the table. We've seen the South Koreans come to the table and we actually end up not having tariffs, but also uh, putting in place some quotas. So this is a good first step. This is the right thing to do. Again, we've had sand kicked in our faces far too long. Dave, play this out for me. Where do you see this going? This is a first step with Blast Furnace B, uh, but not just for your company, other steel makers. How does this slowly pick up momentum uh, and snowball? Well it, feel, well, it feels like a renaissance for us because people are coming back, the volumes are coming in, and so long as uh, the organization sees the demand from the customers, we're going to be fine. We'll have to see how all the politics play out, but we have to remember, again, the, the price of steel, the changes in the price of steel, people get all concerned about that, but it didn't seem like they were all that concerned from 2015 to 2016 when steel prices were dramatically dropped by 40%. Did the cost of goods go down? Of course not. So we don't really think it's going to have that big of an impact going forward. We need to play this through. Great jobs are coming back, and that's what we need to focus on for our people, our communities, and the USA. Mind melted and made in the good old USA. It's a great thing. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.